This one has our favorite thing, a window in the front over the bed. Now it has the least favorite thing, the east-west bed. Yes, but it's an east-west bed with a slight difference. It's a sun seeker made by titanium. This little van, well it's not so little, it's about 19 foot, single axle, towing like a dream. I think it's a bit of a wild child. Just like you, eh? So what else have we got coming up? We're doing a video just very shortly about our top five things when you're looking to buy a caravan. Because we've had like nine or 10 vans now. We've been right the way through them. They're all starting to look the same from a lot of respects, but there are some key things that make a difference. So I think you should be aware of those when, you, when you're going out looking to buy one. Yep. Yep. So, we're looking for our first camp. It's a hip camp. What's it called? Peaceful Country Camp. camp. Peaceful Country Camp at Tamworth. Peaceful Country Camp, but just outside of Tamworth it is. All right. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at her hanging on out there like a kid. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Craig and Tracy Caravans by the campfire. Mm -hmm. We've arrived at our first destination. Spectacular. Check this out. We've bought up this Sun Seeker Wild Child. It's yes. five years old. A lot of people out there looking at maybe hooking up with a second hand van. Yes. So we wanted to see what kind of value is out there. Whether you can save yourself thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars by Or even more. Maybe more. At these top of the range. Well, especially when you factor in the tow vehicle required for some of these big sun seekers and titaniums. Yeah, so they reckon they're pretty good. So we've got this one, it's already done a lap. What that means, I don't know, but it's certainly it's in great condition. When you're buying a van that's five or six years old, typically everything that could have gone wrong with it has gone wrong with it and it's been fixed already. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's something it's been that's a point of view, yeah. Well I think it's definitely going to be happening. If mm -hmm. something's not working or doors are falling off and the stove's stuffed and the fridge doesn't work, they would have had that back for a warranty repair already. Look, generally speaking, <clears throat> for a van that's done a lap that you could probably pick up for maybe 65000 somewhere around that. In single that axle, park, yeah. yeah. Single axle sort of van. Mm -hmm. You've got to get rid of that COVID tax. I think every van you see now has got at least $10,000 extra added to it. Yeah second hand so it's just up to you how well you can negotiate and the new vans have gone through the roof so maybe mm, maybe we've got to start seriously looking at vans that have been used you'll get some that have been used more than others but once they're used and I felt like when I was towing it it felt like it was already at home used to being towed now that sounds a bit stupid I know now, a favorite shoe that's worn in it just fits feels like that it just fits so like great. a glove. So we're going to show you inside. I'm going to show you outside. This little campsite, it's a hip campsite. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pretty good, isn't it? Just outside of Tamworth. It's like you're in a field. And look up but as you're looking at these here. pictures, <laughs> just a nice, cosy place. Mm. There's one communal fire pit, which we've probably got a problem with because we don't like being with anyone. It's okay chatting to people at a campfire or at a campsite. But you want to be able to choose whether you want to actually be with those people or not. Well, you don't want to um, lob on top of them. They're already here first. They've yeah. got the fire going. And you just don't want to walk over and interfere. It's a, it's a hip camp. It's what, $20 a night or something? Or something like that. Cheapest we'll put the chips. Price in, but... Cheapest chips. And there is a toilet. Okay. So what are your initial thoughts about this van, Trace? I just think, <coughs> um, look, Good it's man. compact. Yep. It's light. Yep. It certainly tows well behind the 200 series. You cannot deny that even though I'm the passenger and I'm not driving, it certainly doesn't feel like the van is tugging on the car. And what I've noticed is the width and depth of the cupboards in this van allow yep. for maximum storage if you know 
how to store food. There may well be lots of opportunity out there between the 40,000 and 65,000 mm. to really pick up something of exceptional value. Mm. Now, I'm not sure you're going to find things that have been kitted out with the latest lithium battery system. Or, um, you know, cruise master suspension with the airbags, yeah. zip, 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 zip. Yeah. Every time I drive down the highway and I see a, a 1970 Midford van or a Jayco van, or Viscount. And a Viscount or whatever, they're just cruising along. They, they have nothing that would be comfortable in it, like a shower and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and a shower and toilet. But they're still around. So you'd have to think that one of these leading brand companies has got to be lasting another 40 years. We'd have to think so. You'd just have to, hope. you'd have to make that deduction. Right, so we'll take you inside now, have a look around. Mm -hmm. So, what's going on in here? Lovely, welcome to the inside of the wild child. Wild child, mm -hmm. looking pretty flash. It's all white and grey. White and grey. White and grey. Better than dark and moody, is it? No, it's just different. Oh. It's just white and grey. It's white light up and the airy. top, I, I suppose the grey down the bottom. Yeah, light and airy. Good. And dark to hide all the marks. So when you first walk in, you've got this bed. We have an east-west east bed. Yep. But this is a bit one of a difference. So you have... A little area you can walk up the side. So you can walk up the side to access that cupboard or you can get off and walk around ah. rather than climbing over something. I noticed you doing that. You were shimmying down the bed and then getting out the back here. Yes. Was that good? Well, it's easy because you stole half the doona last night, so that's fine, so it was yeah, easy. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing about this is you have this over ah, the bed. Your window. favorite window. My can favorite. you imagine laying here in the summer or just in the spring and autumn with that window open with a nice breeze going through and you've got a window at either end of the bed yeah, as well so you've got you? one there you've this got one. this big one here which got this other big one all right nice view out there yep that looks pretty good so unless... you've got three big windows over the bed okay you've got one... lots of overhead cupboards you've got one cupboard beside which has got shelves in it oh, no. which is good but that's only as far as the door opens because yep. of the window so you know whatever you store in there you either don't want to use frequently if you're going to be getting it from this oh, end. Right, i see yeah yeah so that's interesting i haven't noticed that in any other van but then again is it a big big issue well, you this can is certainly access that quite well can't well you? most east west beds go flush right up to the wall oh, right. so this is something different with these so putting up with that is better than having no yeah. cupboard and then we've got this cupboard here but we do have yeah we well, just move the fan the out, there, right? out of the way so you have four overhead cupboards. They're quite deep, aren't they? All with two hinges, which are all still in really good condition. Look at that, all the way in there. They're not yeah. very wide, but they're, they're deep. Not very high. Yeah. Yeah. They're, look, 35 centimetres deep, I guess. And probably 25 high. But anyway, lots of stubby holders in there. Yeah, the latches will still work. That's There's good. another one over here. Yeah. Oh, another kettle and toaster. Ah, uh, good. I was looking for that toaster. Yeah, I know. And you said there was none. Well, I just didn't see it over there, but now I've seen it here. Oh, good. Okay. So yeah, salt, pepper, right, that's tea. Good. So and there's another PowerPoint in there. It's convenient. The the, look, in this van, there are lots of PowerPoints. Yeah. Nearly every second cupboard you open has a PowerPoint in it. That's a double PowerPoint in there. Yeah, that's good. Which is on. Yeah, one's probably for the microwave. Really yeah, good. just leave it on. So it's on. The next hire, I might think it doesn't work. If We've got this on. great hatch i actually really like this hatch these are the older style hatches mm. where they just open and vent, vent. they have they're yeah, like so a vent you just close it they? Off. so they let a little bit of lighting and then and then you just open it back up so it's four ways yeah. so it doesn't matter what you wish yeah it's yeah okay so you can close that to wherever there might be a prevailing wind you want to open that side and not the other side one of the issues apparently that they have with these is people forget about them leave them open then drive off and Oh yeah. There goes the hatch. Might rip so that's something probably off. why they've gone to these new ones. But it has one of these, and okay. it has one of the standard ones that you normally right. have. So what about under bed storage? Is there any? Under bed, two drawers. Uh, two of those big drawers. You put shoes in there, whatever. More clothes. So there's no actual. You can't lift the bed up and have no. any storage. No, no lift in the bed okay. up on this one. No gas struts. Right. Oh, no. Good. So then you come in. So this has the kitchen on the on the driver's side and the dining room on the near side. Yep, let's go through the kitchen. Okay, two big windows on either side, which is great. It's just a simple kitchen. Yep. Simple, compact, which is another word for small, but we have a microwave. We have a small cupboard, which they've got cups in. 
the brainchild is here. Three cupboards, simple cutlery cupboards. Uh, I mean, they're fairly deep. But look, this this is like, this van, it has double bunks when we get down the back and have yeah. a look at the moment. So you've got to think here, you've got to have enough cutlery and everything for four people, don't you? And then you have a look under the sink. Under sink storage. Yeah. It's really nice in there. There's not pipes absolutely everywhere. There is pipes, but they're not absolutely everywhere. And there's more power points up the back. There's power points in every second cupboard. I think mm -hmm. I just said that. Well, right, plenty of room to store stuff. Yep, good. Latches. Then we've just got the normal cooktop. Right. Yeah, three, yep. three gas, one electric. And as you can see, this, you know, it's done a lap. It's been it's done some work. work. It's pretty good. Look at the condition it's in. Mm -hmm. Where you see a little bit of corrosion and heat, heat sort of impacting error on these things here, but they they certainly work well. Yeah. Stays on. It's nothing really wrong with it. Then you yeah. have a griller. Grill. Oven. And the oven, it's a typical oven, which nice. really That's works fine. really well. And then you just have pots and, and pans, storage. Pots and pan. oh, that so side. really, to operate your kitchen, using these cupboards up here and those ones down here, mm. you have got quite a fair bit of room. Yeah, they're just lacking bench space though. So if you wanted, you were cooking and prepping, this is open. You're either prepping over there and you're going to have to clean that or we're going to be using the table. Yeah, right. That's that's just the way it's going to be. So you've just got to be organised. Yeah. And I found too. I came in here last night and we had a range of decorative things here. Rubbish. Leftover <laughs> junk, right? And I had to clear the whole thing mm. before I could do anything. So that which might is, force you which to is keep just, the van clean. It does. It does in a way make sure that you are really organised and tidy. Yeah. Neat and tidy. There's a spot for everything. So what's More over here? Points. So over here we have. The table. This is the table. The dining room. And we have two big cupboards. Mm. So over here, this is falling out. A couple um, of big cupboards. Plates. Oh, bowls, plenty of room in there. Plenty of room. And this has been used, so you can see yeah. this is one of the side effects. So this, that's, that's, but look, at least you know what that is. This has been used. This would be the primary cupboard, I'd yeah. reckon, that's been used in this van because the hinges and that and the and the struts on all these other cupboards are fine. Yeah. These ones here just worn a bit, but yeah, so no, no big deal. Anyway, all the stuff that we've had, we have drawers in the back of the car, right? And this is all of the stuff from. So the this back. is one drawer's worth of one stuff. One drawer worth of stuff, in just the using car. these bag, basic bags, yeah. and we've just managed to store it in here. Yes, some of these little things have moved around, so I've opened it quite gingerly when we've yeah. pulled up. And these bags here, look, they're just cheapy Kings ones. When I say cheapy, they're not that cheapy, but they've got clear cover on the top, and you can see it. You know, there's all sorts of brands and people that make these, but. They're pretty good, particularly when you're coming in and out of a car or you want to go to a little picnic, and grab your key things, put them in there. Yeah. While you go. We have another one over the top here, which is right. completely empty. Up here. More power points. And and power points till the cows come home. So, but that's just got nothing into it. So more Ever cool fridge. Ever cool fridge, which has worked really well. Yep. That's a good size. This is a two way fridge, this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 240 volts and the 12 volt from the battery. We have freezer, yeah. reasonable size. And fridge. That's all good. Reasonable, really good size. Actually, that's probably what I'd say standard size, but. Mm. Only a standard size kitchen. Yep. Right. Okay. And then you come further along. Let's see this table here. How's that work? Well, all right. It's just got a little. This is like the old days. So you just undo this. Now, depends how, how much lubricant you might want to put on there. Just pull it out. Yeah, you can see. So that swings around, does a whole range of things. Yeah, comes over here. So you just got to think if you've got that out, <clears throat> this is a four person van. This so, limits a lot of your space. Like, so who's. It's a bit of a squish to get in yeah, there. Yeah, four people aren't eating in here, are they? No, no. Well, when they. Oh, when they, well, maybe they are. Maybe you have a little stool over here, here or something and you, you eat from the table. The Who bed knows? seems quite worn, like in one particular, the bed's worn in, the mattress is, and it's sort of got this nice little groove where I think everyone's been sitting. <laughs> yeah, you can right. see there, that east west bed, you'd be sitting on that corner there, wouldn't you? Yeah. Like people might be sitting in there. Yeah. So how far does that table go that way? Oh, yeah. you can no, 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 the other way. Well, this is actually not too bad. Like if you were sitting here and you were doing stuff, mm. you could turn it around so you could get in. Anyway, 
so the table moves around and again look you, this is a smaller van so you've got to fit everything and everyone in here yep yep so anyway it's got these great pockets which has got the remotes in it great for a couples great pockets in here a couple of pockets in there yep and then over, over here, here we have the this? washing machine Oh, this is a big space that we use for the washing machine. Yeah, well, it's a pretty big washing machine. There you go. Look how big that is. Three and a half kilo fully automatic machine. Yes. Wow, that's big. I think in the model after this one, they went to the wall mounted washing machine and just made a little bit more room. You got more, but anyway. more USBs and whatnot yeah. over here. See these here? So they're going in. So over time, you just see, uh, that one will stay in, these ones won't. So you've got to expect to, these. Everyone's using that one. Yeah. Anyway. And it's a good height, like we've used it to charge and everything can sit flat. Yeah. So we've got a TV mount here. Yeah. You've got two TV mounts Yes, in this that's game. right. It's interesting, you can mount the TV here to watch out in this area, or you can mount it up here, right? Yeah, so they've thought about multiple different positions and where to plug in to get the power and connect to the aerial. It's got the standard wind-up area. Yep, <coughs> these are always good. Everyone has one of these things, don't they? Put the keys on. So we've got the rear of the van. Yeah. What's so happening down there? You've got two big glass doors. What are they? Go down. They're storage. Storage, so the, are they? This is one of my favourite things in fun vans. Is these big right. storage containers. So yeah, next to every set of bunks, you can see here these two bunks. Mm. They're all good. They've just got all our stuff on them, right? And I guess that's what you do when you're a couple of fans. Yeah, every bunk has got the multiple power points, USB ports, 12 volt. They've got their own Sirocco fan and they've got their own window. Yeah. So these are about six foot long, these beds. So pretty good. They seem pretty sturdy. Another big one. Climb up. There. Okay. Which we have here. Three of those, one, two, and three. And you still got all, all this same. behind you here. So that's yeah. hanging space in there. Yeah, it's three more big drawers. Okay, they're pretty deep. Yeah. One, two, three. Can you use that bottom one? Is that? Yep. Yeah. Usually there's always something going on with these bottom ones. All right. If someone's put the shoes in there, that'd be me. Yeah. Cool. And we've got the shower. Now it's a combined shower and toilet. Right. What's well, combined shower and toilet, that looks nice. There you go. Yeah. So we've got one of those wooden grates here. So when you're just doing, you know, you've had a shower, you take that grate out. And then you have a shower and then you put it back in so you can get in there if you've wiped the toilet lid and still go to the toilet without worrying about having to super clean the shower floor up here it's one thing as well it's got more of these fusion things pretty good really and it is it is a solid unit except for that toilet there so that's that's placed into the solid unit and then siliconed around the outside and it's got silicon on the roof so it's got all the silver stuff, all the chrome. Yeah. You like the black stuff, don't you? I like the black part. Baby. And what's here? We've got a, a window. We've got a vent. This oh. is probably the most yeah. This is evidence. the only evidence in this van that it Red may light. well have done a whole lot of work. You can see how in that mesh there, it's a little bit dusty. And you can clean these till the cows come home, but it's very hard to maintain. Then they get a bit droopy. Yeah. Right? But besides that, Everything else is good. And that's the it's same. got the lights. Do you turn those lights off? Right. Yeah, like that. Lights on, off. Open the hatch. No problem. Yeah. Okay, we've got the brain box section in here. This is the older style water. How much water you got in there? So we've still got about a quarter of a tank. Here's the electrical on and off and the gas on and off for the swift hot water system. Just one switch for the pump fusion stereo system and we've got the MPPT solar charger that's pretty much it under the seat in the dining area are two AGM batteries and there are two solar panels on the roof yeah plus we've got a AC to DC charger so that's it for the power supply if you were looking for a good second hand van that had done a lap and had been worn in what, what are the key things you sort of notice that you have to prepare for that you might want to maintain or or replace or upgrade or whatever? Well, the one thing is going to be these fly screens. Right. So those, right. those midi mesh screens, what happens to those? They lose form, yeah. basically. So over time, they do lose a bit of form. Yeah, they lose structure. Yeah. 
and if you've had little kids in vans and whatnot pushing on the windows after they get in trouble once the problem is the first time they do it it's, it's there forever so this is the the blind from the kitchen so if you're preparing and cooking and washing up and that blinds up you're going to get splashes on there yeah this is clean but you can see that it has stains so that's something to have a look out for so make sure you open all the blinds and you know how, how dirty they might be mm -hmm. this one here i know this would have a little bit of grime because it is in the kitchen area and there's lots of steam and yeah. heat coming off it's mainly the frequent areas yeah. so it's over the it kitchen is. and then again over here yeah. like most of the other ones they just go straight so you up see. Look, you can see and it's not bad up. when you when you pull it all the way down yeah. that looks quite nice yeah Right, and it does tend to maintain its form to a certain degree. Yeah. But when you put it up, you just got to get used to it. See those? It just gets caught up. Mm. Right, so it doesn't all sit in Constantina up nicely. And go straight up into there, like over here. <clears throat> so this anyway. is the way it's supposed to look. Yeah. So that's one th one thing to look at, all these blinds and midgy mesh screens and whatnot. So you. here you just find the, the cupboards that are used most frequently, they may not stay up as well as they used to. So these things here are very universal. Just replace them. Low cost item, bang bang, whack them in. Anyone can do that. If you're not handy at all, you're gonna have to get someone to do this kind of stuff for you. But I think, you know, look, it doesn't take much to undo a few screws. So you can check other things out, like some of these hinges here. Just over time, you can see just the development of a slight bit of rust. You know, that's just use condensation. A um, little bit of paint chipped off here. So these are all very small things, but you need to be prepared to find them. Yeah. Yeah. Other things you should be looking for are all the seals in the roof. Yeah. Whether there's any cracks in the joins. This van here is in amazing condition for all the work it's done. So you can only start to think that. This is a brand name caravan. Top of the range. So you've got to think that maybe the workmanship in assembling this van is a little bit better than the others. Mm. If you stay within the brands, you're going to be doing fine. You know, in terms of resale value, in terms of warranty and repairs. That warranty and repairs thing, when you think about buying a new van, you know, you get your warranty for 12 months or a bit longer if you pay for an extended warranty. When you buy one of these secondhand vans, like if you get it checked out thoroughly and it's got no cracks in the frame and it all seems to be together and you have a proper look on the roof and around all the seams and it all looks good and there's history and the people that are selling it to you are, are genuine uh, and there are genuine people out there selling. Ask to see pictures of where they've been and all those kinds of things. Be prepared to spend some time there. And also be prepared to walk off if you're not feeling completely comfortable. So don't fall in love with what you're going to be buying. But Often I, the pictures, the destination pictures are in the ads in many of the bands. You'll see where yeah, the they might be. Been. Just ask for more pictures, more stories, what happened, mm. where'd you get stuck one day. You know, all those casual things in conversation. But it is, like but, you can look at the leather lounge, right? there's no cracking or fading in that lounge. When you're buying a van that's five or six years old, typically everything that could have gone wrong with it has gone wrong with it and it's been fixed already. Yeah. Well, that's it's being repaired. That's a point of view, yeah. Well, I think it's definitely going to be happening. If mm. something's not working or doors are falling off and the stove's stuffed and the fridge doesn't work, they would have had that back for a warranty repair already. And I'm sure that if you ask them, some of these people are second, you know, maybe it's not, they didn't buy it originally. It is. And we know nice. for a fact, this one here, this is where you've got to know the history, right? Yeah. This is a brand new air conditioner because a hirer of this van went through a low clearance drive through and ripped the top off it there there this is a vintage stair beautiful you can see well used heavy duty yeah all you do is lift it up and she's in yeah probably rattles a bit while you're traveling along but nothing that you can hear in the car and then you just pull her out away you go it's a little bit narrow so when you come out of the van there you can see it's got to be a bit careful with that first step so the modern aluminium ones are, are a little bit wider plus they feature those flashy blue lights and underneath lights 
Do you really need that? I don't know. Compared to the real deal. Let's just come around the back of this van here and have a look. We've got the Safety Dave camera up there. And we've got a big container on the back. This is for the generator. Let me just open this one for you. Very sturdy box. With the grey water, there's a lot of water coming out. That's the gas heater just igniting. But the owner of this fence put a little pole holder in and what he keeps in here is his fishing rod. So that's actually lined with some carpet inside. Bit of a treat. Some lights on the back. All looks pretty good really. This crash pad bag, this is actually ours, but we take it everywhere. Of all the bags, rubbish bags I've had on the back of vans and cars over the time, this would have to be the number one in terms of how long it lasts, that kind of stuff. So that's not a sponsored ad or anything, we're not sponsored. So if you get an opportunity to subscribe and like, that'd be much appreciated. You can see on the back here, it looks a bit dirty, but that's because the other morning we got up and it was very early, lots of dew on the van, and then we took off down a dirt road. And that's how it looks after you do that. This van's available on Camplify, so we'll put the link below in the description. Yeah, looks reasonably attractive. Just having a quick look under the van, here's the gas bayonet for the front for the barbecue. Yep. You're having a look for evidence of lots of red dirt and off-road. This really is in pretty mint condition. Yeah. It's a little bit of evidence of some pitting and that kind of stuff, but that's just from the constant rocks hitting it. But what you would be looking for under here, if you were looking for a quality second-hand van, is just, you know, are there any cracks in this chassis? You know, those kinds of things. It does have a six inch drawbar. Everything else is sitting on four inch cross members. Very sturdy. Looks good. One thing you do notice over here, see all those pipes? I bang on about this all the time. They've got to be, like this is the best setup I've seen. They're all running down one side of the van and they're all together. If you found one like this that had done a lap and was in this good a condition, yeah, you wouldn't be concerned at all. It's a heavy duty drawbar at the back. Four big strong bolt on sections. You find these U bolts here too, they're bolted to the chassis. So that's an added thing. Lots of them just wrap around with U bolts and a little bit flexible. And again, all those pipes are over that other side running down the one side of the van, which is good. No grey water tank as you can hear. Lots of water just coming out into Mother Nature. Here's the two 95 litre water tanks. They're both at the back of the wheel, so it sort of takes a little bit of the load off that ball. You just gotta be careful how loaded it is. Got the suspension, just the trailing arm suspension. A couple of heavy duty shock absorbers, heavy duty spring. Very good condition for the amount of work this van has done. Good stuff. Look at all that room down the front there. I think I'd be moving one of these water tanks in front of the chassis and putting in a grey water tank at the back here. But that just allows you to get off, off the road a bit more into national parks. Just so quickly have a look around this side. We've got the other side of this tunnel bit. And in here, there's been a couple of mods done by the owner, but in here we just pull this out. This is the big barbecue. Yeah. They've got the Ziggy barbecue because this lid folds back. You can see the benefits of this barbecue. I'm not, I've got a Weber myself, but anyway, I can see the benefit of opening this up. It becomes much flatter and then it fits into the standard tunnel boot. And behind we've got a whole lot of room for a box full of gizmos, you know, to do with the barbecue. But I think that's quite handy. And look here, have a look at this. See here, a little bit of a fail in the in the rubber, but that's not what I'm talking about. See these hinges here? They've just gone the distance. So it's very important that when these drop down, they don't overextend themselves all the way back here. Or there's something beside them, behind them that stops them just dropping straight down. 
very good, I think. Something else you can see here over time. See a little bit of anodizing on these latches. So just gotta make sure you just give them a spray with the WD-40 or the, what is it? Lanatec. You know, the Lanatec, that kind of stuff. If you do that all the way along, you won't get so much of this, but they still work quite adequately. Lots of adjustment there. Nothing getting into that tunnel boot, which is a good thing. So, wacky doody. Big window here. This is on the other side of the bed. Mm -hmm. What you got to watch here, though, is that if you're going to have that window open, you're not going to have the door open. Yep. Or you're going to have the door closed all the time with the window open, and then you just come here and you got to make sure it doesn't bang into that window. So there's really not much evidence here of that ever happening. You know, a couple of little marks there, which would correspond with hitting the edge of that. Anyway, nice. This door's in really great condition. Just latches there. And one amazing thing, some of these vans, it's just like, it's, it's like this Tetris of how to get the door open, isn't it? This one here, you just lift straight up, look at that. Bang, easy. A little bit old fashioned with the door. Oh, it looks like grandma's door doesn't it? Yeah, but it's <laughs> effective. But very effective. So a little bit of security, mid GMS screen. Yep. And in terms of airflow, like you've got the window, which is half the size of the door. So if you've got just the screen door open, you've yeah. got a lot more airflow That's rather than having true. the door open. Yeah. And maybe in the nighttime, you've got the window open and the door's closed yep. for security or whatever. We've been through that step. Nice little grab handle there with this light. So it's got one light here. And then underneath, when you have a look, it's got a little blue light. See that blue light in there? Can you see the blue? Yep, yep I can see the blue. Yeah. So at least you know where the door grab handle is in the night time. And these here, they've sort of gone the distance quite quite well. A little bit weathered, but I'd imagine you can get a little replacement panel for that if you needed to. Another big window here, this is over the sitting area inside. So you can still pass stuff through if you wanted to, mm. you know, to, to this area around here. Okay. Not as effectively as the other layout. Uh, another vent here. Have a look here. This is 16 inch alloy, alloy rims. Yep. These are primal wheels. And they've got the good tyres on them, the all terrain, BF Goodrich, all mud terrain. Sorry, they're not all terrain, mud terrain. It is a full off road vent, so it can go anywhere. Still got all the original mud flaps. This is the side table. Again, just like any other side table. Just pick it up, lock it very convenient. This doesn't have an outdoor entertainment hatch as such, but it has all the attachments out here. So you just bring your TV out, slider on there, plug in your aerial, your 12 volt supply, and it's got another 12 volt supply here, USB, a couple of USBs. All right, have a look here at this plug. There's very little evidence in this van of it having done a whole lap around the country but you will find a little bit of dirt in things like this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 240 volt here. So once you're plugged into the power, you can plug your kettle in here, your coffee machine, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's all good. And around here, there's no fish here either, by the way. Yes, you that. caught an air vent. Caught a vent. This is a standard Thetford toilet. Yeah. So what you got to see here, the only difference between this one and the, the more modern ones that are plumbed into the van, this has its own water tank. So you got to fill up the water here, put a few chemicals in, make sure it smells good, the water. And there's a little clear pipe here so you can see what's happening, how full it is. What happens to these is over time, it gets a little bit of a, that black, moldy, dirty stuff in there. So when you hit the button on the toilet, the first couple of spins around of the water will have a little bit of black shit in it. Is that a big deal? I don't know. This works fine. Okay, another little vent here in the back of the shower. These vents are just between the internal, like, frame of the shower and, and the external wall. So if there's any buildup of condensation or whatnot, it can just be vented through here. Okay, doke. Two lights out here. These are the white lights. So this is like six years ago, before you really ever saw 
any lights that were orange and white. Well, orange lights were very expensive back then. Well, they were. They probably were. They're probably just coming out. Yeah. Everyone wondered what they were. They're better than blue, I tell you that much. At the moment, this just has white lights. So if you wanted to retrofit them, that's pretty fine. You've got the bracket up there, which helps the awning as you're going along, so it doesn't get all that bounce when you're traveling on the road. Another light over here. Well, pretty good, really. Yeah, I think it's great. Aluminium frame, don't forget that. These wild Charles or sun seekers made by titanium, they all do have the aluminium frame. Now, apparently that's meant to make it lighter and stronger, but the manufacturing costs of doing that and all the welding and bolting together, I'd imagine it's a little bit more expensive. That's why these vans are, are a bit up there. You can see too this awning, very nice awning. But over time, you'll find it just perishes a little bit right on the edges there. Might have some little cracks beginning, a little hole. So we haven't been here in the rain, so I don't know what's gonna happen there. But it just gives you an idea. You have gotta think too, if this is being used every day, every single day for one or two years, and you're rolling out that awning, putting it back in, you know, something's gonna happen, isn't it? But I can tell you, all these arms, and the putting up and down. Have a look over here. You see, a lot of these here, right, have got, you'll see the more modern ones, they've got an extra little clip here that you've got to pull to unlatch it, yeah? And that's just, every time I put my fingers in there, I think, oh, I'm gonna cut my finger off. Whereas these are a bit more old fashioned ones, you just pull that up and down it comes, yeah? So it's only one, one action. Okay, very good nice these all slid out very well you know there's anti-flap devices you get that whole kit and you've got to bolt things in across now these other little anti-flap devices too there by the time you tie it down put those on maybe you've got one support beam over the middle it's not a very long band but that's probably enough mm -hmm. yeah we've never had any dramas with with band awnings on bands but you see some horror stories don't you Yes, you do. Right, we're going to have a quick look down this side. This is the driver's side. So we've got two U-Butte tunnel boots. The good thing about these, if you have a look in here, this goes all the way through, yeah, and it's got two lights, one at each end, which is my pet thing. A lot of these vans just have a light, one on one side, one on the other side. I don't even know what that's about. But this is good, plenty of room, all pretty standard. It's got the breakaway system controller in here too. So if you have a look in here, yeah. So it operates off the car battery when you're towing or the battery in the, in the van. So just put it on, you can test it there. A little green line will come on. Beep, beep. That's good. These are the standard Thetford doors. All pretty similar. This one here I like. <clears throat> this is like a bonus storage area. Yeah. So if you have a look in there, plenty of room. It's got to be, look at this, this is a perfect size plastic container. In there. All the way in there. And we can put this in. Put this in there. There's plenty of room. And again, just like I said, around the front box. Around the front box, it's really a personal thing. You can set that up however you like. Set these up however you like, we'll leave that out. These are good and handy, everyone should have one. This converts 10, 10 amps from like a standard residential power supply into 15 amps, because mm -hmm. the vans run off 15. So you just plug your 10 in, out comes 15. Away you go. And again, this van's done a lap. You've probably heard that 15 times, but those things still work quite well and there's no evidence inside of a whole lot of mess and stuff getting through. So. That's good. Here's the 15 amp inlet. So you can plug your generator in there or plug into a power supply at a caravan park or, or even at home using that adapter. A little aerial vent for the back of the fridge. A couple of other just general vents up there. Big windows. Mm -hmm. So this window's over the kitchen. The other window's over the bed there. These are all pretty standard type of windows. Double bunk set up here. And this, look at the shower at the back. 
So I don't know whether this is standard, this rubber. A lot of them you see with the chain. But anyway, it's on here. And have a look here. The taps both. The taps. They work the same way. Yeah. So. On, off, on, off. On, off. So, this is the first van I've seen that's like that. Remember all the other ones? One goes one way and one goes the other way. And it's got a controller here for the for the flow of the water on the handle. So that's all a good thing. And a little, a little catch here. Put the handle on. That's good. This is the hot water system. Oh, it's a bit hot. Mm. This is a gas hot water. I think it's around, it could be between 17 and 25 litres of water in there. These are great systems. Um, they're not instant, but they do light up when the temperature gets down to a certain level and they keep everything hot. Typically when you turn the hot water tap on, it's only momentary before the hot water comes through. So that's good. We've got the stabiliser legs. These are all pretty standard edition. They just go up and down, that kind of thing. There is no grey water tank, so that's something you might want to put on. Have a look down here. When you get to a main supply of water, you can just plug it in there. There's a little tap under here, so you can turn that on. Yep. And also, this is the filler for the water tanks. So when you plug your water in here, you just open this tap, right? And it will let the water go through into the tanks to fill up. So that's a great thing, no mucking around with little caps here and caps there and gulp, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> There's none of that really happening. Okay, just looking at the front of this caravan, we've got a DO35 hitch. These are the ants' pants. Yep. I've got a trailer mate hydraulic jack. This is almost looking vintage. Thousand kilo weight rating. So it does good. Just pump the handle up and down. Turn this to let it down. Right. Next best thing to a, a blackjack, I reckon. We've got a connector here for the Safety Dave video camera at the back. So if you've got that connection in your car, you just plug it in there. Two nine kilo gas bottles. Got some jerry can holders around here. These are actually attached to the door. So plenty of room. Two of these toolboxes. One on the other side comes with a slide out. So nice jerry cans there. Holds a 20 litre jerry can. Mesh on the front. You can see that it has done a lap, but everything's in very good condition. It's got the Alco stabiliser connector here for the brakes. So that's a good thing. But a lot of the time, if you want to connect these vans up properly, so this grey one will power the van while you're driving. And this red one here gives power to the brake stability system. So really, it's a bit of a toss up. So if you've only got one of these Anderson plug connectors on your car, you need to get two. Yeah, good idea. Otherwise, we just travel around with this brake controller plugged in. It's got solar on the roof to keep the, the batteries charged up anyway. Yep, and we've got the stabiliser bars here. This is where they plug in. That's them down there. They've really made a difference on this trip. We don't normally use these stabiliser bars. So this is a first experience for us. But yeah, it just gave the van a lot more balance on the road, it would appear. Yeah, sat on the car well. We've got airbags under the car, but yeah, really did make a bit of a difference. Having a look on this side, this just got a lot of stuff in here. Mats, hoses, electrical cables. You can see there it's on a slide, so it just comes out. So these front toolbox setups, yeah, the front toolbox setups, they're really up to the individual what you want to put in there. You know, so you can have a big box, one slide out one side, one out the other. So it's just a choice really of what type of toolbox you'd be looking for. Right, so what's the big deal? Looks like any other caravan to me. Well, it does look like any other caravan, but this one's done a lot of work. Yep. It's, it's been around, it's been through the red dust. It doesn't have a DRS system. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles and no. mod cons. It's got a lot of mod cons on it, but how's the van stash, you know, stacked up? And it has, it's really stacked up well. Toe's nice. Uh, there's no real evidence of lots of bull dust throughout the van. Mm. 
a couple, you know, if you look hard enough, you can see a little bit of orangey dust in some of the the, the Michi mesh, you know, the screens in the roof, that kind of thing. But apart from that, it all looks pretty good to me. Could we do another three laps? So, Sunseeker, you think, is a, must be a pretty reputable brand, given that mm -hmm. this one has gone around Australia plus more. Yep. And now it's rented out quite regularly on trips. With, with a lot of people that don't know much about caravans. Yeah. And it's still hanging in there. Yeah, it's really functional. I found it to be functional. Um, it, everything it just works. I liked it. So the Titanium, pretty good. This is 19 yeah. foot single axle. Compared to the dual axles, um, or the four-wheel caravans. I, I've got to say the single axle or two-wheel vans, yeah, so you're like carrying the, the two-wheel vans and you're just pulling along the four-wheel ones. But in, you know, the two-wheel ones are definitely more manoeuvrable. If you go into a campsite like we've just been in and you've got to wriggle your way around some trees and up a track, uh, two-wheel just turns straight away behind your car very easy to manage and control so I guess that's another thing you're thinking about yeah so what else have we got coming up we're doing a video just very shortly about our top five things when you're yeah. looking to buy a caravan because we've had like nine or ten vans now we've been right the way through them they're all starting to look the same from a lot of respects but there are some key things that make a difference so yeah. I think you should be aware of those when you when you're going out looking to buy one yeah yeah Okay, so don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you up on our next adventure. Righto, see ya.